Hey guys, welcome to Coast. The dollar is getting a lot of heat. A very senior India banker called it a financial terrorist. The Google search trends for de-dollarization are through the roof. But is it really game over for the currency? Let's find out. Everyone's got only one thing on their mind this year. It's de-dollarization. The US is the most dominant currency in the world. It's the currency that most countries use when they want to buy or sell any sort of goods or services among themselves. And it's also the currency that the global central bank turn to when they wish to park their emergency forex reserves. But over the past years, countries having second thoughts about the dollar dominance. Everyone witnessed what happened last year when Russia invaded Ukraine. The US froze billions worth of dollars of Russia's assets. They imposed sanctions and kicked Russia off the SWIFT messaging system that is used for banking transactions. Other countries freaked out because they too had their assets in dollars. They began to fear that US had way too much power. A trust deficit began to build and they started talking amongst each other how to slowly nudge out dollar and deal in their own currencies for trade. If every country starts thinking along the same lines, then it could change the dollar supremacy. Perhaps even given rise to an alternative financial order with some other country leading the pack. That's de-dollarization, an attempt to break dollar's iron grip over the trade. But the important question here is, is it so easy to break the dollar or is it simply a wishful thinking? Hey guys, so before moving forward, I would just request you to please subscribe the channel. It really motivates me to create such informative videos. Well, let's try to understand how the dollar became so powerful currency by rewinding a bit into the history. So there's a popular story everyone turns to when they want to explain the dollar's rise. They began in 1944 when the Second World War was coming to an end. Countries back then realized that they needed to set up a new financial order for the advent of globalization. So, 700 representatives from 44 countries gathered in the mountains of Bretton Woods to hash things out. And then US emerged as a winner because it had ace up its sleeve. It had accumulated massive reserves of gold thanks to a couple of things. Firstly, the government had banned its citizens from buying and storing gold just a decade ago and the government included the gold instead. Secondly, during the Second World War, it exported military equipment and took gold as a payment. The end result was that 70% of the world's gold reserves were with the US. So the US used that to its advantage. They said they would use base as gold since everybody was used to saving in gold anyway. And they said they would peg the dollar to gold and it would keep the rates steady. And then other countries would simply have to piggy bang on this and peg their currencies to the dollar. This one Bretton Woods meeting changed everything. The dollar became powerful. Countries parked their reserves in dollar assets and it served as a primary currency for international trade. But that's just one part of the story. In reality, the dollar dominance was already a work in progress by the time Bretton Woods came about. Since the 1820s, the British pound had been the reserve currency of the world, maybe partly because it was a massive empire and forced its colonies to trading with pound, or maybe because the country absorbed 30% of the world's exports. Either way, nearly for around 100 years, the pound wore the crown. But then the things began to change during the First World War. Britain was neck deep in it and was struggling for money to fund its military. So was France. The US, on the other hand, had stayed away from the war initially. It had money that others didn't. So the American government and bankers hatched a plan to lend money out. And in October 1915, a massive $500 million Anglo-French loan was granted. The US was making inroads and by 1920s, the dollar had become quite popular. But it still couldn't dethrone the pound quickly enough. And there came a point when they both were the two dominant reserve currency, the pound and the dollar. 
this shared status continued for at least 20 years before the Bretton Woods meeting. The taller dominance wasn't an overnight affair led by one event. It was slow, it was gradual, and even though the British economy was stumbling, it took time for the dollar to really come into its own. So maybe when everybody talks about de-dollarization, it's more of a, hey, we see this happening in the next couple of decades kind of thing. Sure, countries are getting increasingly annoyed at U US for weaponizing its dollars. They want alternatives. But the problem is there is no alternative. Unlike how the dollar emerged to replace the pound, we don't have a like for like option today. Now, everybody would think, what about China? That's the direction everybody is pointing towards anyway. Well, now think about it. Will the people really trust China more than US? Of course not. There's a massive trust deficit here. There's zero transparency when it comes to economic policies. It doesn't allow capital to flow freely. It restricts foreign investment into its bonds. The economy is tightly controlled by the ruling party. So, what about India? We are also an emerging superpower. Sure, we may be a lot more transparent about our affairs when compared to China. And we are increasingly trying to get folks to settle trade in rupees. But we are still not a competitively open economy like the US. We have restrictions on how much our government foreign investors can buy and such. Also, as some folks point out, while such bilateral deals have been attempted in past, they are very short-lived. So, as the end of the day, dollar is still supreme. Nearly 88% of the global trade and 60% of the world's 12 trillion dollar foreign exchange reserves are in dollars, despite all this talk about de-dollarization. Well, now, think about it this way. Think of switching between Amazon and Flipkart when you order something. It seems straightforward, but it's easier said than done. You probably already have a wish list on Amazon. You have Amazon Prime, which gives you insanely quick delivery. You are used to dealing with it. You know the reputed sellers. So yeah, in this case, dollar is Amazon and everything else is Flipkart. They could share the podium, but as long as US remains a large and open economy that everyone else wants to play in, switching out the dollar may not be that easy. And that means we will probably be talking about de-dollarization even for a decade from now. And like always, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a comment and do subscribe to this channel.